Hello again and welcome to a slightly different video from what I normally do. Um, this time what it is, is a repair video or I hope a repair video. Now what you'll see in front of you here is a remote control. Um, I've actually got a number of these, these devices, there's three of them. And now it's an unknown brand, it's called Status, so it's the Status Remote Control. It's about £16, got them from Amazon. Now, I bought these about a year ago, and what happened is, is that one of them then stopped working, is that you activate the remote control and the items that's plugged in don't turn off or turn on. It just doesn't work. So I contacted Amazon, they we were good enough to replace them, they worked fine. Then the exact same fault developed again in one of the devices. Now, when these are plugged in, they don't get moved. Uh, that's it. it. But it seems to be an inherent problem um, that this device does have a fault. Now, I will show you the fault. Uh, we'll cut into that in a second. Um, just to give you an understanding of what the actual fault's like. So let's let's see that now, and then I'll explain more um, and how we're going to go about this. Right, to show you what the problem is, this is a, a working device. So I've got the remote control here. If I press on, you should see the red light comes on. And I don't know if you hear the click. Now, if we take this out, and we take this unit, plug it in, do the same. You'll see there's no red light, but again, I don't know if you can hear the click. So it is communicating, but it's just not powering on, and this is a problem with these particular devices. You put them in the wall, you never touch them, and then this fault just happens. So we're going to open this up, and we're going to see if we can see um, if it's actually repairable. So you've seen what the problem is, or you can even hear it, hopefully. Now, one of the things that I noticed with these devices is, is that there's only four screws, which is fine. Um, unfortunately, I don't, yeah, you might be able to see them. You'll see that they are non-standard screws. Now, if you watched a previous video that I just released, I got the iFixit screwdriver kit. And we should have, if I find the right part, we should have the driver bit here that this will hopefully now fit into there. And I can unscrew this and then hopefully see what's causing the problem with the power not turning on here. So let's get a driver on the end. And let's see if we can unscrew these and get in and see what the problem is. There's a closer look at that screw type. Why they do these things, I don't know. Pain in the backside. So again. Whoa! Problem! We have a problem, Mission Control. We, we, we have managed to break one of the driver bits on a newly opened iFixit kit. Um, I, I guess I'm going to have to see if their warranty is as good as they make out. Um, that is bust. I don't even know if I can get the rest of that out. Um, Give it a try. There's another bit in here. Let's see if it will take that. It's a slightly smaller bit. Yeah, that will do that. Maybe that one was a bit too thin. But um, there you go. You've you've seen it live. A brand new iFixit kit, and I've managed to break it already. Let's try here. I will be honest. This particular bit does feel better. And uh, yeah, 
They do look the same. Anyway, we're not interested in that. So let's see if we can now open this up and see inside the plastic. And I'll have to have a closer look at this and see what clicks on and what clicks off when we apply power to it. So nothing instantly comes to mind what could be causing the problem. So I think what we'll need to do is we'll need to get this board off, um, have a little look underneath and see if there's something there. So I can see two screws here. So those are the small Phillips. So we'll get the Phillips driver. And we will try that. That's uh, maybe too big. So let's screw this. I should be using my eye kit case. So let's pop it in there. Just have it, I'm afraid. Let's get the next bit out. Right, let's see if we can see if there's anything behind here that could be causing the problem. Uh, certainly at the moment I don't see anything obvious. No, I don't see anything obvious there at all. Up here. There is a spring. And that Here's loose. That's almost as if the solder. That's almost as if the solder has come away from that. I don't know if you can see that little bit just wiggling there. So I think what we will attempt to do is give that a little dab of solder and see if possibly that sorts the problem out. So we'll do that. And let's see what happens. Right, what I've done, this is the original one with the fault. As I'm saying, the spring is loose in that. But I've also noticed as well here, there's like a blob of solder going across. And if you look at a working one, you'll see no blob of solder, all lovely and clean. That's in solid as well. Now, I don't think you need to be a rocket scientist to work out that if we've got that shorting that um, and that loose, that clearly uh, can't be good. So I don't know what's happened to cause that. So I think, as I say, what we'll have to do is clear that up, we'll resolder that again, and then we'll see if we can get this thing back up and working. Right, so we have taken this round to a friend who can solder better than I can um, and it's been quite an interesting experience to be quite honest um, certainly um, that was required soldered which has been done um, up here um, to be quite honest they are all linked so that actually was okay so um, shows you my knowledge in electronics and everything else um, one interesting part that we did come across was that the LED, uh, that was just hanging off, I mean, it's floating, so that was all resoldered. Um, actually, all the solder joints were, were touched up, um, so now when I actually use the remote, uh, the LED will come on, the relay will click, but there's still be no power th going, going through this. So, it's basically still not working. So the only thing that we have sort of both agreed on that it could be is the relay 
And I believe that online, some people have said if you give that a knock, um, it's enough to kick it back in. But to be quite honest, I give it a couple of knocks and whatever, and it doesn't seem to go. So um, <laughs> it's been a bit of a disaster, really, um, from breaking a driver end and uh, soldering all of that again. Uh, we've still got a device that isn't working. So I don't know if maybe you know a bit more about electronics, circuit boards and everything else, you, or you've maybe encountered one of these devices, I think it'd be quite interesting to hear um, your views and what it might actually be. Certainly when you read the reviews, and say, online and Amazon regarding this product, a lot of people are complaining about the things failing. And as I say, for the cost of it, I really don't care. I've still got another two that I can use. But it would just be very interesting to know what is causing the problem and how easy it is to actually sort it. So, as I say, it's a slightly different video. Um, a disaster. Not really an ending that I was hoping for, but um, hopefully it's proved to be reasonably interesting and they uh, passed a couple of minutes and uh, until we go and watch something a bit more exciting. So, thanks again for watching. And if we do get any other kind of feedback on this or manage to figure out what was up, I'll update things and I'll let you all know. Okay, thanks for watching and bye.